guys, welcome back to Doom Studio. I'm um, sorry I've been away for a while, it's been real busy. So I wanted to come back and show you a cool, well, not cool, but a Reaper tutorial basically. Um, over the past summer I've been recording my Morning Pyre EP that I just released actually. And I recorded that here in Kiev, Ukraine at Kiev Sound Studio with uh, Andy Mishin. And um, I recorded it in Pro Tools 10. Um, and there was a cool little thing that uh, Andy showed me that I have completely adopted and I think uh, is something worth sharing. Um, and that is to print stems internally. Um, of course there are a lot of uh, neat features both in Reaper and uh, Pro Tools that allow you to bounce tracks. And for a long time I thought bouncing that was what you do. And that's the best way. Um, but there are actually quite a few things about printing stems internally that I really think uh, are hands down better than bouncing a track. Um, so why am I saying that we should not bounce a track anymore? Well, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that this is another way, okay, that I've found that I like personally, okay? So, I mean, when you're bouncing a track, what do you have to do? You have you know, it's CPU uh, time, and you have to wait for the track to bounce, and you probably have to import it back into your session or your song, depending on what DAW you're using or your work method, okay? And then what do you have to do after that? Well, you have to listen to make sure the bounce is okay. So you, you end up having to listen to the bounce anyway, all right? What about freezing a track? Same thing, you freeze a track, but then that track is frozen. You can't make any changes to it. If you want to change something, you have to unfreeze it, and then freeze it again. So there are, there are steps that you have to do that, that can be eliminated by recording stems internally, okay? And what happens if you bounce a track, and then you listen to it, and then there's a mistake in it, and then you're like, oh man, now I have to fix the mistake and bounce the track again. Ah. All right? you, can, you don't have to worry about that if you record internally because if you see the mistake you can stop, fix it immediately and continue recording right where you left off. Okay? Uh, so with, the mod, with, with the, what you have to do to record internally I think offsets what you have to do after you bounce the track anyway. It's the same thing. So I'm going to show you how you can basically do that in Reaper. All right? Now with Pro Tools, uh, recording internally is a bit, I, I would say, easier because there's just a system of buses. You can set the I.O. output to a bus, set the receive I.O. to that bus, monitor input, record, done. Um, with Reaper, that doesn't, it don't, because of the way the track system works, we, we're not going to be using a bus, really. We're just going to be using a send receive. And I'm just going to show, show you, this, you know, the simplest way that it can be done. Uh, you can do this. Uh, as long as you understand routing and signal path, I, there shouldn't be any issue for you, okay? So it's a very simple process, and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Uh, before we get started, before this will work, you need to ensure that you have stereo mix recording enabled on your computer. If you don't have stereo mix, uh, it's not going to work out for you, okay? So make sure you have it enabled, all right? Um, I, I disable input, just me personally whatever doesn't matter anyway and what I've done here is I've just created two tracks very simply I put easy drummer in here and I wrote something just whatever and so if we listen to it nothing to it right so let's say in the old and golden days or maybe last week you wanted to print that stem and be like, okay, I'm going to bounce the stem and re-import it, right? How many times have you been importing a stem and you have your MIDI item click like this and then the audio stops right here? And so you have a symbol that is cut off. Fantastic. Now you need to extend the MIDI item and re-bounce, right? Not such a big deal when your clip is only 20 seconds. Big deal when your clip is 7 minutes, right? We can avoid this by internal recording. So here we go. We set up a track, I've named it host, okay? And then I made a second track and I named it drums print. Alright, you need to be very meticulous when you're creating your files 
and your track so you know what everything is. All right, so I made a track and I right clicked here, okay, and then I went to record output, record output stereo. All right. Ideally, you should be using ASIO, AZIO drivers. I'm using WME because I'm recording right now, so I can't use ASIO. Anyway, just whatever. You should be up to date on that as it is. So you right click stereo mix. That'll uh, enable recording, right? Now you can do this one of two ways. You can go to the I.O. on the host and create a send, or you can go to the I.O. on the drum sprint and create a receive. Does not matter. The same thing is going to happen. For me personally, I like to create a receive because it makes more sense in my brain if to set up the track with the track I want to get something from. Okay, so I'll send up a receive, really easy, and I just click host. All right, done. Now if we go back and we play, you, you realize, okay, great, we have we have the it's playing, right? Okay. Now the only thing you need to remember is that when you have two tracks playing the same thing, the volume will be increased. But that's just because it's doubled in mono, you will not be creating, you, you, when you record, it won't sound like that, okay? So now we just basically arm the track, alright, and we can record. Easy, right? And if we mute the original, you see we get an exact perfect copy, right? We didn't have to go anywhere, didn't have to import anything, didn't have to do anything, right? And now I purposely have some mistakes here so I can show you how easy it is to fix something, all right? You can see that we're clipping here, right? Now if you're if you're bouncing. Maybe in the preview window when it's bouncing, you'll see that you have a clip, right? But you don't know where it is exactly. Here you're watching it and you can see, oh no, I have a clip. I need to find it again. So it's just as simple as deleting this, boom, opening up your mixer window here and okay, I have a serious clip. Where is my clip? You don't even you don't even have to record again. You can just press play. And you can watch here when you clip. So we're clipping, let's mute that, alright, All right. so it seems we, we seem to be clipping right away. Okay, so that tells us our effects are too loud. So an easy drummer here, just bring this down to maybe minus 6 for example, okay, which is a good habit anyway to do. Okay, so now we're safe from clipping. Cool, done. Let's try recording again. Same thing here, okay? Good, all right, now you're like, yay! Like, I'm not clipping. So then you go, oops, then you go back to listen to it, and you get to the end of your bounce. Aw, man. <sighs> now I have to rebounce it again. No, you don't. You can start from right here, okay, and record again. All right, and it's as simple as clicking the take that you want and gluing the takes together. Okay, let me show you. So I'll click the old take and we'll press play. Here's the <clears throat> other take. So that's the take we want. So easy. We just select the takes we want, click glue, and now there we go. We have a track printed internally that is basically mistake free. Okay? And now what we can do is we don't need this anymore so we could basically just delete it or if you want you can archive it if you're in Sonar X3 for example archiving it is fine 
but you could delete it here. All right, and now we have a perfectly created trap. Perfectly created track that we can use to start mixing with. Okay, and we, we did it all inside Reaper, not having to use all this freezing or bouncing business. And it took basically less than three minutes. Okay, you can do this with every track and you can find mistakes. Okay, but I'm going to back up and I'm going to show you something. <clears throat> Alright, so let's say you're recording your track, cool, awesome, and there's a major mistake in it and you hear it. I'll just create a mistake. Okay, something might something like this, the, the no noise, no sound. This could happen, for example, if you're splicing guitars together, and then you went to do another take, and you forgot to edit. Not a big deal. You can re-record. All right. So let's re-record this thing. So I'm, I'll just pick the bad take for now, just to make a point. Glue this together, and we see our in our waveform we have a huge problem here. We're like, oh no! And that would be your worst nightmare if you were printing or in bouncing, right? No problem. You don't need to reprint this section again. Just start from here and print again. So here we go. Done. And what do we do? We pick the prints that we want. We glue. And there we are, fixed. It's that simple. So uh, just a little bit of routing and practice, you know, and you can be internally recording your stems instead of having to bounce and do all the extra work after you bounce and then you realize there's a mistake and stuff like that. So very cool little trick. Uh, it'll help free up CPU and it just, once I learned this, once Andy showed it to me, once I started doing it, I absolutely completely love this technique. Um, and it allows more flexibility and I think it saves time. So I highly recommend you guys to try that with Reaper, okay? Anyway, uh, I've got a website in the works, doom-studio.com. Um, you can check that out right now. It's currently being constructed. Some pages are very, very incomplete. But my hope is to have a comprehensive website for home recorders and mixers alike. Um, so keep an eye out for that and keep an eye out for updates. So thanks for watching. Leave a comment if it was useful. Thumbs up. You know, I appreciate it, and uh, talk to you guys next time.